Okay, the adult ventricles are filled with CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, and the cerebrospinal fluid is made by choroid plexus. Choroid plexus is a plexus of two different types of cells. It's a plexus between capillaries, which are peripheral blood vessels, and choroid epithelium, which is derived from neural tube. And what we see here is a diagram of what the choroid plexus looks like. There's blood, the capillaries are here, there's a ba basal lamina, and then there's this choroid epithelium with all these little villi on the, on the uh, ventricular side. The blood comes out, is, uh, comes out of the, the capillaries and is filtered by the choroid epithelium. So what you have on the periphery is blood, and what you have on the central side, the ventricular side, is cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, is simply filtered blood. What does it have? It doesn't have um, cells, so no blood cells. It doesn't have heme, so it's not red. It's, it's actually clear. Um, and it doesn't have a, a lot of the large uh, molecules that are present in, in blood. So it is a, a watery version of blood without any heme, without any color. What this means, this simple fact that the choroid plexus is a marriage between a capillary and choroid epithelium means that anywhere that you see choroid plexus, one side is periphery and one side is inside the brain. Okay, that's a big deal. It's gonna tell you a lot. So, when we look at a diagram of the ventricular system, what we see is that the uh, choroid plexus is located in stereotypical places. It's always located in the same places. Now, one place, let's just look at one place where it's not located. It's not located in the cerebral aqueduct. Why? Because there's nothing, there's no access to the periphery. You need a capillary which means that you need to have a peripheral structure um, in order to get uh, a choroid plexus. So the uh, choroid plexus that's in the third ventricle is in the roof. What we can do, we can go to the board and look at this. Here is, we're just gonna diagram the diencephalon as a, as a circle. And the ventricle is a slit right on the midline. This is the third ventricle. And it's right here at this roof that you get choroid plexus. Because up here is the vellum interpositum. This is outside the brain. This is, we, we have plenty of access to capillaries here. And then this is inside. And so it's this marriage, it's this border between the periphery and the central that is the place where you're going to see uh, choroid plexus. Now, if you then look at the hemisphere, the hemisphere is here, and what you'll see is that there is a place, it, as it follows the inside of it, there's capillary here, and then there's uh, choroid epithelium here and that enters into the, the lateral ventricle. So every place that you see choroid plexus, one side is periphery and one side is in the central, uh, is central. You, let's go back to the slide. So don't see it in the cerebral aqueduct. You don't see it in the central canal. And in fact, you don't see it up here. You only see it on the inside curve of the hemispheres where the vellum interpositum is because that's where you have access to, uh, to, to capillaries. The other place that you see it is back here in the temporal pole simply because there's a blood vessel that comes in here and supplies that, okay? But nothing up here in the frontal pole, nothing back here in the occipital pole. So this, these um, places where CSF is generated are gonna pump out a lot of CSF every day. Um, let's just take a look at what this looks like. Here you have 
um, okay, so wh where are we looking? We're looking at a blow up of around this area. Here's the front of the brain, here's the back of the brain. Here's where the diencephalon meets the telencephalon. We haven't talked about this structure here, but it's the corpus callosum, we'll get to it. Here's, so now if we, we look into this square, what you see is this is cerebral cortex here. This is the diencephalon. Here's the roof of the diencephalon. The third ventricle is in the space that the, the board is, that this slide is. So here's the third ventricle, here's the roof. That, this cruddy looking stuff is chorid plexus. There's miles of it. It's just miles and miles of these epithelial cells with all their villi pumping out CSF. And this lovely little hole right here is the foramen of Monroe. This piece right here, that's the pineal gland. So this area is up here, this is vellum interpositum. Now, <clears throat> the CSF is formed only in the ventricles. It's formed in the lateral ventricle, the third ventricle, and the, in the fourth ventricle. It then flows out from within the brain and it surrounds the convexity of the brain, sitting within the dura, underneath the arachnoid, in fact, the second level of, of meninges, and it forms the sub, it fills the subarachnoid space, the space between the arachnoid and the pia. And that has the effect of have, here you have the dura, which is this really tough covering. Inside the dura is all this fluid, and then floating in the fluid is the brain. So you've got a bag, a, a brain in a bag of fluid. And that allows you, as you go, now your brain is not going to bump into the side of your skull. It's not going to easily get brain, bruised. It's going to be uh, uh, protected by this surrounding fluid. Uh, of course, that has its limits. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at the uh, structures that are deep to the cerebral cortex within the telencephalon and then how the telencephalon connects uh, to, to other structures within the cranium.